So welcome guys to ACH 101 video. For this, uh, for this video, we'll be uh, tackling um, Introduction to Rate Kinetics, which is um, the topic to be discussed under quiz, quiz number 4 for the subject fee print 2. So for this problem, we'll have to determine the order of reaction. The order of reaction for the decomposition reaction of N2O3 given the experimental data. So whenever we are given experimental data, the first thing that must, that must come to mind is we'll have to um, fit it to, a, to an equation. So when given this experimental data, we'll have to determine whether um, this, uh, the, de the decomposition reaction is either, um, either first or, uh, zeroth order, first order, or second order. So the decomposition reaction of N2O3 is a solid is NO plus NO2 gas. So we don't know wh whether or not uh, this reaction follows a zeroth order, a first order, or a second order. But we have the experimental data, experimental data, so we'll know, so we'll have a way to determine the order of reaction. So, uh, for so a review. So just for review, the rate equation is written as negative R A is equal for the decomposition of A is equal to K C A raised to n, when n is our order of reaction. Order of reaction. So, so to start the solution, we'll have to first um we'll have to first start with the zeroth order. So for the zeroth order, we'll have to write it as negative R A is equal to K C A raised to zero. So this will be equal to one. Therefore, negative R A is equal to K. And then we know that negative R A is equal to negative D C A over D P. So this is equal to K. So if we place D T on the other side, so negative D C A is equal to K D T. And then we integrate both sides, uh, transposing the negative sign to the other side. So this will be C A minus C A O is equal to negative K P. Then we will transpose negative C, C, C A out the other side, giving us C A is equal to negative K T plus C A O. So this is the linearized form for a zeroth order reaction. Linearized form for a zeroth order reaction. So so by linearized meaning that it follows the, the form of Y is equal to x plus b. <clears throat> so once we have this, we can then um, use regression analysis. Regression analysis to determine um, the values of m, b, and the most important one is the r squared value because this will determine whether um, this this model is a good fit for our experimental data so so to start off let's just copy this here so now that we have uh, our our linearized form, we can then do uh, do linear regression in our calculator, putting that our R T is our X, so R T is our X, and our C A is our Y, so this is our Y. So just uh, so by doing linear regression in our calculator. So 
So the linear regression yielded that y equals to a plus bx. Our r squared value is about 0 0.9705. Our a is 2.212. And our b is negative 8.389 times 10 to the negative 4. So if we compare this to the equation above, our a, our a is our b here, which is, so this is our cao, and then our b here, our b is our m, which is, so this is equal to negative k. So therefore, our k is equal to 8.389 times 10 to the negative 4. So this is our k if it follows a zero order reaction. So we have to take note of this r squared value because this is what we will be we will be comparing to the other orders of reactions. So now that we finish this the zero order. Okay. So now let's start with the uh, how about what if it follows a first order reaction? So for first order reactions, so we'll have negative R A is equal to K C A raised to one. So it's just C A. Um so our negative D C A over D P is equal to K C A. So by by placing C A here and D P here, so we have negative D C A over C A is equal to K D P. <clears throat> then integrating both sides, so uh, we'll have um, ln ca minus ln cao. So this is negative, is equal to kt. <clears throat> so transposing uh, the negative sign to the other side and ln cao to the other side, we'll have ln ca is equal to negative kt. Then uh, positive and negative, negative ln CAO. So this is now our linearized form for, for, for a first order reaction. So our y now is uh, ln CA while our x is still T. So now we'll have to plot T versus LNCA. So going back now uh, what's our T? So we have zero one eight four five two six eight six seven. Eight six seven one eight seven seven one eight seven seven. So we'll now have to get so this is C A. We'll have to get the L N values of each of this. So by getting the L N values of that, um we have zero point eight four five nine uh, 0 0.7324, 0 0.5128, 0 0.3075, and negative 0 0.3285. So this is what we'll uh, place in our, our linear regression in our calculator. And so when you do that, um, the regression will then so y is equal to a plus bx, so our, our a is equal to 0 0.8461, our b is equal to negative 6.254 times 10 to the negative 4, and our r squared is 0 0.9999. So this is very close to 1. So the closer that we get to 1, uh, the better the better our experimental data is fitted to uh, that our model so once we get a 0 0.99999 it's uh 
usually a good sign that uh, this is already the answer. So if we assume that uh, our decomposition reaction follows a first order reaction, since our R squared is 0 0.999, so therefore our K value will be our B, our, our KB is still our M, and it's equal to negative K, so our K is 6.254 times 10 to the negative 4. So, however, we, we still can't be sure. So, we'll have to, uh, again, test at, so we'll have to test at, at n is equal to 2, or for second order reaction. So, for second order reaction, we'll have negative Ra is equal to Kca squared. So, negative dCa over dt is equal to kCa squared. And transposing Ca squared here and dt there, we have dCa over Ca squared is equal to kdt. Degrading both sides, um, we'll get um, so negative, negative of 1 over Ca plus 1 over CaO is equal to kt. So distributing negative the negative sign we'll have negative one over C I one over C A minus one over C A O is equal to K T. Then transposing C A O to the other side. So C A O to the other side we'll have one over C A is equal to K T plus one over C A O. So this is our linearized form for a second order reaction. So uh, so this time our y is 1 over C A. Our x is still our T. So then we'll have to plot T versus 1 over C A. So Eight seven seven. So, so now we'll have to get the inverse of uh, of these values. So the inverse of these values are um, um zero point four two nine two zero point four eight zero eight zero point five nine eight eight zero point seven three five three and one point three eight eight nine so once again plug it, plug this in to the, in the calculator doing a linear regression analysis so y is equal to a plus bx um, so our a is equal to zero point three six nine one our b is 5.1754 10 to negative 4 and, and our r squared value is um zero about 0 0.9604 so this is less than the r squared value that we got for first order reaction so therefore so since this is so since for a first order reaction, we, we yielded the highest R squared value. So let's just insert this. Okay. So, uh, so therefore, we can conclude that the decomposition, the decomposition of N2O3 follows a first order reaction. And our k value is 6.254 times 10 to the negative 4. Um, so, what if there's a follow-up uh, follow question wherein you'll be asked to write um, 
uh, what is the um, what is the rate equation or the equation of CA as a function of time. So now we'll just have to write, since we know that it follows the first order reaction, so we have negative RA is equal to our KCA. We have our K value of there. So negative RA is equal to 6.254 times 10 to the negative 4 CA. So this is our uh, final rate equation. But if we're asked for the CA as a function of time, so we'll have to uh, show that this negative R is dCA over dt is equal to 6.254 10 to the negative 4 CA. Then dCA over CA is equal to 6.254 times 10 to the negative 4 dt negative. So integrating both sides. We'll have ln CA over CAO is equal to 6.254 times 10 to the negative 4 T. Then getting the E of both sides and then transposing CAO to the other side, we'll have our CA is equal to CAO E raised to the negative 6.254 times 10 to the negative 4 T. So this is now our uh, concentrate, final concentration of A as a function of time. So now with this equation will be used for either for modeling or determining the concentration of A at any time t. Uh, so that's how you solve um, a problem regarding determining the order of reaction whenever you are given A an experimental data. So thank you for listening.